<laughs> okay, the cosmic lines are now open. Um, oh my God, just uh, as we were getting started there, absolute uh, meltdown, everything came flying apart. I uh, had to do a quick restart. So uh, thank you for those uh, who are just joining. Thank you to those that are uh, you know stuck with the show. Uh, we're gonna try to try this one last kick of the can here, uh, third try. So if you like this show, you know, uh, it's going to be totally fan driven. So, um, you know, I want your input. I want, uh, I want your stories, obviously. Um, you know, let's grow this thing and let's see uh, what we can do. I'm pretty committed to doing a hundred and hopefully we can grow this thing and, uh, make it worthwhile to, you know, maybe bring some other guests back on, uh, some former hosts. Um, anyways, I'm Braden. This is cosmic channels. The lines are open and we already have a call on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Yeetis Beatis. I'm calling from Gresham, Oregon. Gresham, Oregon. Uh, quick little funny story. Uh, I was doing some editing, getting this show ready. Um, what was it, like four nights ago, Yeetis? I think, I think it, it, was, was it was last Saturday. Saturday. Last Saturday? And uh, yeah. I'm editing ringtones for some social media stuff that I'm going to do with this. And uh, all of a sudden, there's like a secondary ringtone. I'm like, where is this coming from? Where? Like, I cannot figure out uh, where this is coming from. So it's just driving me crazy. And then I just, it just pops into my head. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I just realized that uh, someone's calling the Cosmic Lines. I didn't know. I had no idea. <laughs> Someone was calling the Cosmic Lines, and uh, it was Edith. So... I know, it's funny coincidence. <laughs> um, I, so, I, I thought it was recording, and he answered, and I'm like, no. There's no <laughs> way it is. And then you're like, no, no I, I can, can hear, hear you. you. I was like, oh, <laughs> okay. So it's, um. anyways, I, I promised Edith to give a give me a couple minutes early, and uh, he could be the first call on the Welcome Back Cosmic Channel. So uh, what's your story? Let's hear it. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, so... so um. um this is so cool. It's my birthday today, so it's just perfect. Oh, happy um, birthday. <laughs> thanks. Um, no, so I'm actually going to start it. It's part of this. It kind of starts with an older story that happened just a couple months ago. I, me and my girlfriend just moved into our first place together, and I think it was probably around September, end of September, and it was middle night. It was around 2.33 in the morning, and... We got, we got only, only one cat, cat and he's, he's kind of a tweak. tweak. He knocks stuff over like half the time, time but we had a lamp in the corner of our room, and it has like a, a phone charger into it, and you can plug your phone into it. And so I got a couple different things plugged into it. And the cord of this lamp is wrapped behind the nightstand, so if someone were to try and rip the lamp off the nightstand, it wouldn't just come off right away. You'd have to untangle the, the cord to it. And it woke us up to... Uh, I, woke I woke up and I saw our lamp getting flung, flung about five, five feet across our room. room. And my, my girlfriend's phone that was plugged in just got launched across the room. And my cat went running. And I'm like, that, that, that could have been the cat. cat. That, that, that cord director, director on that pretty, pretty good. And we'd, we'd only been at this place for just a little bit now. And I think the complex is like 30 years old. And we didn't think much of it. But when we woke up, we're like, that wasn't the cat, was it? And my girlfriend's like, no. No, there's no way he yanked that cord from out behind the nightstand. And, and thankfully, thankfully didn't break it, it but it was a couple nights after that, that. I'm sitting on my deck listening to music and waiting for my girlfriend to come home. And I thought I heard the door open. And so I, I lean up in my chair. I'm on my deck. And I can see through my blinds. And I see what looks like she wears black yoga pants all the time. And I saw, like, black legs go down the hallway. And I was like, oh, hey, babe, how's it going? And I opened the door. And I start walking down the hallway. And I think she's already in the bedroom, like, getting undressed, getting ready to take a shower. And she walks in behind me. She's like, who are you talking to? I was like, what? She's like, I just came in. I'm like, you didn't just come in and walk down the hallway? Are you messing with me? She's like, no, why? I'm like, I saw a pair of legs go down the hallway. Like, I, I wasn't out of the corner of my eye. Like, I saw a clear day. And we both just kind of went quiet for like a minute there. We kind of just got like pale face. And we're like, okay, that's, that's like the second time we've had something creepy happen. And then just last Saturday when I called Braden here, I was just sitting down and my whole body just got this really out of body feeling where it's almost like if you've ever fainted before and you get that tingling sensation from head to toe and you're like, uh Oh, you might've stood up too quick. 
And I was just sitting down, wasn't moving, I was just playing my games, and just instantly fell off and felt like someone or something was watching me. And usually we got neighbors that are pretty damn loud with, like, kids and stuff. Someone's got a dog next door, and it was just dead silent. And I kind of got up and walked around the room, and I just, my body felt super, like, thick and heavy. Like, it almost felt not difficult to move my arms, but it was like I was, like, I, they were weighted, and it was kind of weird. And so I'm walking around, and I sat down, and I just sit there for a minute. And I'm thinking, like, is there, is there someone watching me? And as I'm, uh, as I'm sitting there, I'd call Braden here, and then after I got off the phone with him, this is before I got on the phone with him, I had someone's random black cat walk up to our front door, and we have a Ouija board doormat. We got it for Halloween. We haven't put it away yet. And I hear someone's cat, and i kind of looking at it. I kind of cracked the door open. It sounded real weird, though, and poked my head around the corner, and this little guy's looking at me, and he starts, like, meowing, and it did not really sound like a meow, and it just creeped me out. I was like, nope, I was already on edge. I shut my door real quick and locked it, and he sat there and meowed very it, – it sounded really creepy. It didn't sound like a cat for, like, 20 minutes. And he sat on that that uh, that Ouija board floor mat. And I'm like, really? I got a black cat sitting on my Ouija board doormat? I'm like, this is – I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I'm like, I'm not opening that door again. I went hit in my back room. I'm like, something, something definitely does not feel right. So, and so, so did all this happen like literally last week just before you called? Yeah, so that whole like out of body feeling experience that happened last week and the other two times we got those weird like well, like that sighting in my in our apartment and then the lamp getting ripped off was like about maybe 3 or 4 weeks apart yeah. and it was all like one was in the middle of the night, the lamp, and then when I was out on my deck it was like maybe like 8 o'clock at night. So it wasn't even that late. So, like, do you have a, do you have any animals? Do you have pets? Like, do you have something that could be launching these things off? I don't know. We got our one cat, and at first I was Ooh. thinking back, like, you know, maybe that was my cat running down the hallway. But when I had opened my screen door to like go into my my back in my room, it was he was sitting right there next to the slider door, like laying down, and he's he's a striped like gray and black or gray and white cat. So I'm like, okay, that wasn't him. And judging by where I saw the legs it was like kind of above the couch or, you know, like a couch is like two feet, two and a half feet tall based on like, you know, like the back of the couch. And so that's all like, Hey, that was not the cat. Cause if he ran down the hallway, I wouldn't have been able to see him. Yeah. And that's when it really creeped me out. And so after that, it's every once in a while we hear weird sounds could be our neighbors within. Yeah. It gets, it gets eerie sometimes. So like, cause I'm, I'm thinking like, you know, the, the cat for me is always a cats are, they're just, they're fucking, they're always the culprit with that kind of stuff. But like, it doesn't account for the other stuff going on. So it's, I mean, what do you think it is? I'm not sure because we know the, the building that we're in, the complex that we live in, there's like seven different big buildings with, you know, their own units in them for the apartments and stuff. And I had a brother who lived in one of the other units and it was remodeled and it was new. And we moved into ours. It was kind of older and we could tell, okay, it hasn't been, like, updated just yet. Like, the appliances were new, but some stuff in there was pretty old, and you could tell. And so we're thinking, like, I wonder if Sona died in this building, and maybe they lived in this unit before us for a long time, and then they don't really like people kind of in there. And so that's our best guess right now. Hmm. Interesting. And, but creepy nonetheless. Yeah. So, you, like, are you keeping a little log? Or keeping a log of dates and stuff? You got an EMF reader? What? Like, what? What, what are you doing? What are you doing? Uh, are you lighting sage? <laughs> no. Um. When I when my girlfriend came home, I told her about the Ouija mat thing. She's like, "Did you put it away?" And I was like, "No, no, it's still out there." It was a plan? Did you leave the planchette like, oh. too? Is the planchette you left that out there too? No. No, it's like a, it's like a, it's a doormat basically. It's a Ouija board doormat. Oh yeah, okay. There's no planchette. I think you're fine. But it looks like really realistic. I think if and I, so, she's like just. I think if you don't have the planchette, like I think you're fine. Like as long as you're not leaving a crock on top of there, I think it'd be all right. Oh yeah, she was like, open that door, hit goodbye, and she's like, and flip it over. <laughs> and I was like, okay. And so I did. We haven't had anything weird happen since, but uh, she, yeah. she, um creeped me out one day she texted me at work and like oh i probably shouldn't tell you about my sleep paralysis dream and i was like 
I can't tell these ATT guys this, but she creeped me out. And this is the only, like, can I tell this story? Am I, am I going to get cut off by the dream police? Um, Cause if it, it wasn't what? my experience, it was her experience. Why don't we, um, why don't, okay. So if this is a secondary story, let's, let's leave it open. So you can give, come back yeah. and call back another time with another story. Uh, Cause we'll leave the line open for uh, other callers, but Hey, thanks, oh, for no, being, yeah. thanks for being the first, uh, the first caller back. Um, you know, we're struggling through a little bit of technical difficulties as we're running it, but we're working through these things. This is, it's growing pains, baby. So Yita, thank you for uh, calling yeah. and uh, sharing your no, experience. Yeah. Thank you. This is awesome. I love you guys. <laughs> yeah. Thanks buddy. Uh, we're going to uh, move on to the next caller. So uh, take care of yourself and make sure to call back with your story another time. Yeah. Thanks. You guys have a good night. All right. Peace buddy. All right. Bye. And just like that, the lines are back open. And there's another call on the line already. Look at that. Welcome to Cosmic Channels. You're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's Hillbilly from Discord. I am from Northern Illinois. Woo! How's it going there today? Good, man. How are you? Excellent, man. Uh, excited to be bringing Cosmic Channels back and uh, listen to your story. So I think I've got... I, I was running... If you were watching the stream, I was running into some... Uh, some serious fucking technical if, difficulties, but I think I've got it sorted yeah. out now. So uh, we're good. What's your call about? What's your story? I have two different things. One's really short. One's a uh, urban myth by locally. Uh, first one's of a minor little ghost story. The second one is, like I said, an ur urban myth called uh, Munger Road. All right, let's hear it. So Munger Road is, uh, there's a road out by me where I uh, grew up. <clears throat> Uh, there's train tracks that run on it. It's just a road that runs between the forest reserve. And if yep. you park on the train tracks, turn off your lights, supposedly or like a ghost train comes up to you, and then you'll see handprints on the back of your windshield, and your car will move. Like your like so it, like if you're if you're parked. Mm hmm. Well, just, yeah, you put it in neutral. Yeah, you put. Oh, yeah. You, oh, okay. So you put it in neutral, and you will see like the ghostly prints, and some like a yeah, some ghost of some line back linebacker just starts pushing your car. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. That's... That was the myth, and I I've tried it a bunch of times. It never worked for me. But interesting. And where where exactly yeah, is it's... that Munger Road? Munger Road, Wayne, Illinois. Munger Road, Wayne. The, they. So, Someone local made a movie called Munger Road. I think I never watched it, but I think part of it is in there. But the, I think I know the movie has to do with like some other stuff. So, no, anyway, well, cool. I'm, if you, anyone else has ever heard of that or had an experience, I want to know. Let me know. Call in. Uh, what's your other story? Oh, well, my other story, real quick, was um, just a little ghost story. I didn't actually see an apparition. Right after my uh, dog died when I was a kid, uh, my bedroom door was open and no windows were open and everybody was asleep and my door just slammed shut by itself. Freaked me out. Just uh, any windows open? Like any chance of that? This is just draft action kind of thing? You know what I mean? No windows open. Everybody else's doors were shut. It was in like the middle of the night. My door just slammed shut by itself. Any animals? No, my, my dog just died. Okay, well, sorry to hear, sorry to hear that, but you know. I'm well, I was, to, I was a child, Braden. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to suss it out to be like, you know, is there, is there, an, is could there be an explanation in the house, or is this like a truly like just weird event for you? Truly weird event. Uh, the only time anything ever happened in my house. It was like the the night after my dog died. It was just crazy. I think it was the dog saying like goodbye. Yeah, and nothing. Uh, Nothing else uh, that ever happened in the house. No, nothing. Just weird. Maybe like just a door closing, like that's the, it's closing door on a chapter there. Right. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But yeah, that's all I got. I don't want to take up the lines. Beauty. Well, you had lots. Of I got to go back into the. <laughs> I got. Well, I got to go back into the toddler. So. Uh, oh yeah. Love you guys. Love the show. Thank you for bringing Cosmic Channels back. And. Hey. Uh, yeah, man. Thanks for coming on and sharing your story. So we got a phantom ghost door closed. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Hey, take care of yourself. Be in Discord. Yeah, will do, buddy. All right, just like that, the cosmic lines are back open. Um, 
so again, this is totally fan driven. So I, I want to hear all your guys' stories, all your guys' input and stuff. Um, I I want to work on this show. I'm going to reinvest every dollar into it to make it better so uh, we can get a hold line and stuff like that. But we got another call on the line, as you can hear. Cosmic Channels. Hi there. How's it going? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uh, my name's Frank, and I'm call calling from York, Pennsylvania. Woo! How's it going? It's going all right. I can't believe I finally made it on here after yeah. failing like five other times on different cosmic channels. <laughs> well, and then we canceled it for a while, so you're like, God damn. Yeah, I know. I had time finally, and then you all canceled it. <laughs> yeah, so it's, uh, well, hopefully this hopefully this time works. Are you your East Coast time? Yep. Yeah, see, so hopefully the a little bit earlier starts on Thursday is a little easier for East Coasters to uh, uh, jump on there. Yeah, it also helps. I took off work tomorrow, so lucky me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hopefully not just cut to make a call. Hopefully it's a, you know. No, definitely not, yeah. but this is just a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> and where do you work? Uh, I work at a manufacturing plant and purchasing. Uh, that's, that's the most Frank's I Frank's faking sick. Frank's faking sick. <laughs> just kidding. What's your, uh, what's a, what's your, what's your, what are your, what's your story you're calling about? Uh, so this is actually a ghost story from my dad. Oh, right on. So, um, back in 2020, uh, when the census was going on and stuff, uh, my dad, who's retired, took a part-time job with the census. And because they are not a permanent thing, because it's every 10 years, they typically rent out older buildings to do all the census work and whatnot. And, um, they rented out, um, in one of the cities near us, the old mental asylum, which oh. is also a morgue. And it was, I think it was three or four floors, but they only worked out of the first floor. They had to have IT called one day to work on something in the winter. And IT came, did their job, and then their car broke down. So they did the kind thing, and they said they offered for them to stay inside during the, uh, well, they waited for the car and told them they should probably stick to the first level because that's where everyone is. But if they want to explore the rest of the place, they were allowed to. And there were stories that in the higher floors, people would hear things and see things. And the two IT people decided to go up to the top floor and just hang out there. And I guess like it was 15 to 30 minutes later, they came back down scared shitless. They had heard people up there with them running around making noises, and uh, they never saw anybody, but it sounded like there were people around them following them at all times. And my dad said there were only, I think, three of them down on the first floor besides the two people in IT. Oh. So something, something was up there making it known. And from what I was told, it, it did not sound like anything small, like any animals or whatnot. It was definitely people making sounds and running around. And like no no chance there's like, you know, those dang, dang old teenagers running amok. No, not for something like this. It, it, the, the city has some issues, but if it's a government thing like that, there's no way there's teens getting into that without there being something going on i mean i just hold, i heard a rumor that it's like as long as a teen can fit his head in he can he can squeeze his whole body through like <laughs> I, I think that's the i i'm not sure if that's correct but that would be like that would be biological so if it's not that then like and i mean the fact that it's a, an old assi insane asylum like what's causing those footprints what do you think yeah it doesn't help that the place is also a morgue so that's where oh. everyone went to so it was the uh the whole package and like this is so like this, like obviously your dad your dad's told you this recounted this story yeah. to you yeah what was what was yeah, his kind of feelings on it he thinks there's something there and he's he's kind of the more skeptical guy on quite a few things you know looks for a scientific idea of it but deep down there's things that he knows he can't explain and that just are unnatural out there or paranormal and he does not like to admit that. But uh, we were around the campfire one night, and he told that story, and he it definitely sounded like he didn't want to believe it was something like that. But that's the only conclusion he could come to. Interesting. So it's like, and what's and what's your thoughts on it? Like you, I think there's something. I'm a believer in some of that stuff. I definitely think there would be something there. How 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 far is this place from like where you are now? Uh, it's not that far. It's maybe like a 45 minute drive. 
if but if I really want to see ghosts, I'm not that far from Gettysburg, and there's oh, plenty okay. to see there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I have, I've seen, I've done some things there and seen some things, but that's for another time. Yeah. Uh, now, so, just like, has has have you ever like, does this place have a name? Like, if people are kind of wondering where it is, like, do, you know, can you I give don't people a direction the... to where it might be? So if maybe there's someone else who's had an experience. I don't know what the actual name is. All I know is the old Harrisburg Mental Asylum. I, I think it might have been renamed after it shut down, and it's now just a place that parts of it just get rented out for occasional things like that. Yeah. So I know by the sounds of it, I think it's like somewhat government owned, so you can't really just go in for stuff like that, and it's not okay. marketed as like it, something it's, it's, like this. Like it's not run down. Like it's not like dilapidated. No. There's like you know boarded up windows, and you just crawl yeah. in. You know, rain's coming in. It's like still like a decent building, and that's why it's rented out. Yeah, it's kept up okay. enough for stuff to still happen. Okay, so then that even makes it creepier because it's not like there's there's no chance that you're getting like a, like homeless people like live like just wandering yeah. in or vagrants, right? Uh, nope, you you still have an open place there. It just nobody goes up to the top floors. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess for good reason. Well, we gotta. I mean, I'm gonna send an email right to Zach Baggins after that and see if we see, see what we can get done here. Um, interesting. So, uh, anything else? Any other thoughts about it? I just think there's something up there. That I definitely believe there's probably some hauntings like that, like a lot of the other old mental asylums with everything that went on during those times. I yeah. mean, that was not a pretty time in mental health history. So, like, when you think when you think something's sticking around, do you think it? Like, why do you think there's why why are you thinking around? Like, why are the ghosts stuck there? Uh, I mean, it probably just had a miserable experience in its last um, you know last time of its life, and it just sticks to that. And it just. Yeah. Just kind of like, I don't uh, really think too much about the why. I just think about the what's happening. I that gets too philosophical for me and too much into my faith, and then yeah. I start questioning too much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you start going down the rabbit hole. You're like, okay. Uh, I I remember seeing this one thing where it's like we see these ghost footprints, and it's like maybe the, these ghosts. It's, um, you know, it's like the stone stone tape theory, where it's like these things are just kind of doing patterns what they did way back when they were alive. And people see these apparitions through walls and hear them through floors that shouldn't exist is because there's been renos and stuff changes, but their path has never changed. I, I kind of thought that was a cool, uh, a cool thought process on ghosts and stuff walking through walls. But yeah, I mean that happened at my old place I used to work at. Uh, it was an amusement park, and apparently the owner would walk around in the same path occasionally in the middle of the night. Jesus! Like the founder of the amusement park and uh, Walt Disney. <laughs> nope Milton Hershey and and he would just and like an apparition apparition yeah just certain paths that apparently the third shift would see on security wild but Milton Hershey apparently likes to still visit Hershey Park interesting well I, if you've if you've been in Hershey Park and you've seen uh, uh, the owner <laughs> pacing around uh, what do you call it? hey thanks thanks so much for calling in and, and sharing I'm gonna open the line for yep. more callers but I uh, really appreciate it yep. Thanks for having me. Hey, cheers. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Woo! Cosmic channels are flying right now. Uh, the just like that, lines are back open. Um, like I was saying before, I'm, I'm, you know, every dollar raised for cosmic channels is going to go back into it. Um, hopefully, we can get some nice caller wa call waiting and uh, you know call hold so we can hold five calls again. You know, all this stuff costs money. And uh, we're going to crowdsource it all. So if you guys like that kind of thing, think about donating to the show. And just like that, we got another call on the line. Let's bring them on. Welcome to Cosmic Channels. What's your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, my name's Steve. I'm calling from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Woo! How's it going, Steve? Oh, wonderful. I just want to tell you about an experience that I had that you guys... Through your show, help my dreams come true. After listening to one of your case files recently, right me and my wife, we went and purchased a home that we could not <laughs> afford, but we signed it right at the bottom. We sat there in the mortgage office in my finest Budweiser sweats, yeah. signed the paperwork, <laughs> showed up, gave him a quick, gotcha, bitch. Yep. That's it. Now, now you're so proud homeowners. So I just want to drop in real quick and thank you guys very much. <laughs> So uh, it's all working out for you. Uh, let me guess, you've been practicing this for a couple of weeks. It, it's not that complicated, bro. 20% of the time it works every time. Yeah, and the other 80% it works too. So what are your thoughts on that? So obviously you're talking about our other uh, our other uh, 
you know, podcast Alien Theorists Theorizing. We had a guest on who's um, people. Some people call them sovereign citizens. Some people call them Freeman of the land. Basically, uh, every, free money. You don't have to pay anything. What, what were your What were your thoughts on that interview? I mean, I I thought it was hilarious. I thought you guys had a very good take on it because I. <laughs> When I when you get when he first started, I thought it was going to be something like probably what you guys thought, like a in depth conversation about you know the rights of American citizens and this and that, and yeah, it's just free money. But you know, hell with the socialists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, that that was uh, quite funny. I thought it was like yeah, socialism sucks, but everyone should have free money as much infinite yeah, amount unlimited. of free money. Yeah, so uh, no, it was uh, it was. I, I, I also found it quite humorous. Um, we'll just say we, we're, we were doing interviews and we said we we're going to open it to, you know, crazier interviews. And that guy's publicist did not really pitch <laughs> what that guy talked about. <laughs> so we were a little taken aback being like, what's going on here? We even had to have a discussion after the show be like, are we okay to release that? Are we worried that anyone's going to follow what this guy says? And we had to re-listen and we're like, there's no way anyone listens to that and thinks – I'm, oh yeah, let's give this a shot. Other than honestly, you. <laughs> I thought it was great. I mean, <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I really, I love the show. I appreciate you guys doing it. And I mean, I think it was cool. I think it'd be funny to get some more stuff like that on. Oh yeah. Uh, we, I mean, we got we're 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 gonna do more interviews. We got a we have a a legit person who says he's been abducted and has been to other planets coming on in January. So it'll be it'll be interesting. We just thought, you know. What the hell? Let's have some more people awesome. on there. Yeah. So, hey, thanks for the call. No. Unless you got a story, I'll let you go and open the lines back up. No, that's it. Thank you, much. Beautiful. Thank you. Bye. Enjoy the new home. Uh, and, and just like that, the lines are open. Um, I'm Again, thank you to the chat. It's helping me live, kind of tweak things. Um, we, we ran a test call last week. Everything worked perfectly absolutely perfectly couldn't work better and then uh you know you log back on the thursday after and, and nothing works exactly how uh it worked the following week that's how it goes um but uh, you know as we're talking about um everything every dollar we raise here is going to go to towards cosmic channels making it a better show um so thank you jeff Ventry for sending in uh some money and thank you clayton Killian for sending love the show he says uh really appreciate it so that you know there's there's two different uh two different ways of uh, donating to show you there's a paypal uh button on the screen or you can do the super chat stuff or if you're already sur supporting alien theorists theorizing on patreon you're already helping the show so uh thank you all there and the line's still open uh, until we get a call uh i'm going to read in a, a fan story that was sent in to us and this is from uh, Jordan B. Um, let me just make sure I was supposed to read his name uh, before I read it. Uh, my name is Jordan, and I'm from Indianapolis, Indiana. Love ATT and Cosmic Channels. Have been listening to you all since the Stan Romanek case file number 44 over five years ago. I think that's six years ago now. Uh, still one of my favorite episodes. You guys are absolutely hilarious, and ATT is without a doubt my favorite podcast. I eagerly await every new episode. Uh, anyway, on to the story. This story takes place about four years ago or so. I was, I was visiting some family about three hours north of Indy. My mom didn't have a spare bedroom at her house at the time, and my grandpa was out of town. So my wife and I decided we'd stay at his house that night. My brother had one of two keys to his house, so he gave it to us. He lives nearby and visits my grandpa often. We go to bed about 10 p.m. and I wake up around 3 a.m. to what sounds like footsteps in the hallway outside of our room. My grandpa built the house. Oh, my grandpa built the house. And it's about 60 years old and has some old wooden floors. So I thought maybe it was just normal creaking. But this sounded very distinctly like someone walking back and forth in the hallway several times. I was wide awake and not sleeping. Please, please don't sick the dream police on me. It's okay. We'll take it one dream at night. Uh, this kept me awake for several minutes because I didn't think anyone would be there at this time. And we had the only other key to the house beside the one my grandpa has. 
For some reason, I wasn't too scared. I just assumed it was maybe my grandpa walking around the house. So I fell back asleep and woke up a couple hours later. My wife and I were eating breakfast that morning. And out of the blue, she asked me if anyone else was supposed to be at the house that night or in the early morning. I said no. Not that I'm aware of. Why, she said. Well, I heard what sounded like someone walking back and forth in the hallway in the early morning, several times. At this point, I kind of go pale. I said nothing about what I heard that night. And to hear her saying this solidified what I heard early that morning wasn't a figment of my imagination. It happened. We talked about it for a few minutes, trying to make sense of it. and But basically, it came to the conclusion that it was mostly unexplainable. The doors were still locked. We had the only spare key. There was no sign of anyone being in the house. We never heard a car arrive or leave. I called my grandpa later that day and asked if he would if he'd been in the house that morning and he said no. He wasn't aware of anyone stopping by, especially not that early. This further cemented the eer eeriness of the event. My grandpa passed away several years earlier. My sorry, my grandma passed away several years earlier, but not in the house. So I'm really unsure of what or who this was, but it definitely seemed paranormal to my wife and I, and we're both extreme skeptics. It's an event that has really stuck with us over the years. We've told many people and it spooks everyone we tell. Nothing like it has ever happened to us before or since. Anyway, cheers, boys. Keep up the great work. And thanks for reading or sharing my story. Happy New Year, uh, Jordan. Um, hey, thank you for uh, sending that in. And it, it, you know, it's creepy. I, I mean, I grew up in a house that had ghost footprints. Um, really kind of creepy, creepy uh, thing to live with and hear, um, especially if you're just alone at night. Um, if you are interested in not calling in and you want your story read on the air, you can you can email uh, Cosmic Channels Podcast at gmail.com. That's Cosmic Channels Podcast at gmail.com uh we need a call 1-833-703-0424 um someone give me a call let's go Woo! you ask and you deliver thank you let's get them on the line cosmic channels what's your name where are you calling from i'm back how's it going noah pretty good i'm doing pretty pretty good so how are you doing tonight so far Good, man. It's good. It's nice to be back on the lines. It's nice hearing people's stories, uh, hearing their accounts of strange things. So it's uh, it's fun. I'm I'm working through technical difficulties through the whole thing. So it's uh, it's fun. It's keeping me on my toes, keeping that mind sharp. Uh, what do you got for me tonight? Well, I I can't. Okay, so my memory's gone blank. Can I ever tell you the, my Ouija board story at mm. all? Because I can't. I, I can't remember. I'm use, I, I'm drawing a blank for some reason. It doesn't. It doesn't pop into my head right away. So why don't you? Let's hear. It. Let's hear. It. I want to hear it. Oh, okay. So this happened around 2017. Now I am sitting in my room, minding my own business, until my friend calls me and says, invites me over to next to his house because the next day because he wants to try playing a Ouija board. I of course told him to screw off, but until he insisted that I don't have to actually play it, I could just sit there and watch. Next day, I go over to his house. It turns out he doesn't really have a Ouija board. He's just going to draw one on a piece of paper and cut out the bottom of a water bottle uh, and use it as a planchet. I just roll my eyes and say, well, probably going to be harmless. And they start playing it. Nothing's really happening. And then I find out he doesn't really believe in it. And I'm just sitting there like, then why would you play it? <laughs> and what's the point? So he goes off and plays video games in the other room while his his you know wife at the time decides to continue playing on her own. I, of course, refuse to put my hand on, on it regardless because regardless, it's still a Ouija board to me. I don't like anything about that stuff. Yeah. So she starts playing it and she starts asking the same usual questions like anybody here, you know, is there any, any presence here? What's your name and whatnot? All of a sudden, I feel this weird sensation on my back as if someone is just right there, not, not touching me per se, but it's just like someone's just right there looking down at me. And I say... Is there someone behind me right now? She gives me this, and she gives me this weird look. I was he's like, huh? And the plant just moves straight over to yes. And I'm thinking, 
hold on. I look back and I call my friend and he pops his pops out from right uh, right behind the wall and he's just like, yeah. And I said, did you move over here any, any chance? No, why would I? I was like, okay. And turn and as soon as he goes back, I turn back back around. The feeling's still there. It was very when he when I was talking with them. So I said, mm, okay, that's odd. So I start asking it, asking them questions like, "What's your name?" It's and it answered with Andrew, and I said, "Okay, do I know you from somewhere?" And it said, "School," and I said, "Oh, okay, okay." Um, and then I said, "Okay, well, where are you contacting us from?" And it said, "Hell," and immediately I'm thinking to myself, "Oh no, no, no," and that's when I start feeling something touching my back. Not like just one thing, but it felt like three things, and it was starting to dig into my back. And I, and I realized what was going to happen, because I know with the with with the zo zo, you make three marks on it, and that means you're just like you're possessed kind of thing. I was like, that's what I've heard from Ghost Adventures or something like that. And I was just like, I ain't, I ain't with that shit. So I immediately turned to her and I said, and I kept repeating, say goodbye now, screw you, say goodbye right now, and I mean it. And immediately she said, okay. She said goodbye, went over the goodbye thing. I got up, flipped, off, flipped the middle finger to my friend, walked outside because I needed a breather. Oh, and I needed it bad because it, it was a lot. It, I, it, I, the whole apartment just felt heavy. I was like weighing down on me. As soon as I walked out of that place, I felt like a breath of fresh air hit me. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, everything just felt like, oh. <gasps> Finally. And then he checked up on me a, a little while later, and then he w we just kind of sat there. We didn't talk much. And he apologized and everything, of course. And then that that's pretty much the whole story of it, really. So any, any chance they were any chance they were messing with you? If it, it possibly, yes. But at the same time, I, I've always had that, had that sensation, that weird feeling about me when something's not right. Yeah. So why... usually I can tell I can tell I can tell usually if it's them messing with me at times. This time I did not feel as if I was being one hundred percent messed with. I mean, maybe a little bit, but there was just things about it that just like just didn't. It set me off. Like the whole the whole the thing is the, the there wasn't a bad vibe before we started playing it. It was only during it is when it just the whole I felt something just it hit me and I couldn't breathe or just couldn't everything just felt like I was just being forced in forced into place it just felt so heavy I just couldn't breathe that's why hmm. I was just so relieved I got out of there now um like what do you what like realistically like why do you think um like how do you think these boards work like do you think it's all that do you think it's the people like the spirits drumming up through people? Do you think actually people are like a, these ghosts are attracted to these Hasbro boards? What is, what's your final thought on why these boards work? I think there, I think there's usually, I think most for, for almost all people who play these things, there's always going to be either there's going to be one of two people, one person who has no belief in it. And then there's one person who absolutely has a belief in it. Yeah. And whoever has the belief in it, I feel like as if the spirit's going to draw to them most of all because they're the ones being drawn in. They're like, okay, I they can power see. the board, I guess. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And and that fear, that fear that they would have from it, and they're and they're like un the unknown of it. That's like that's what the spirit looks at them and say, okay, I can tell this person is going to have a lot of energy to draw onto. Let's go. Let's draw to, onto them and forget everyone else. Yeah. Interesting. And I hey. think, yeah, I think that's what it drew to me on that on that day. So, uh, Noah, thanks for calling. I mean, it's not a Cosmic Channels uh, if you're not calling in, sharing a story. So, thank you for uh, calling in. And the first Cosmic Channels back. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna let thank you off you the line. Much. Open the line back up. All right, and have a nice night. You too. All right, cheers, buddy. Have a nice night. Ooh, and just like that, the lines are back open. If you want to call in and share your story, um, I will take a single dream. I will take a single dream a night, I said. So uh, if you have a really wild dream uh, that you wanted to share or a ghost story, UFO account, cryptid sighting, or you just wanted to call and share a story or thought on a conspiracy or 
whatever you like. Uh, 1-833-703-0424. Um, is the number to call. Um, give me a call. Share your story. I want to hear it. If you're sitting there ho humming, um, do it. Call me. Uh, if you're listening to this post and you're overseas and you're in the UK or you're in Australia or New Zealand, I know we have some listeners down there, uh, and you want to share your story, but the timing never works out. If you email me at cosmic channels, at gmail.com. Um, if I can get enough of you lined up, I will start a show. Um, I'll do one show, maybe a month. Um, at an early morning time for myself in order to give you the opportunity uh, to share your story. So if, you, uh, if you're if you down under or somewhere like that, like go ahead and, um, you know, email me, CosmicChannelsPodcast at gmail.com. Um, this is a, I'll give, I'll give, the, I'll give someone like one minute to call in um, or else I'm going to go. I have one other story. Um, that's a little bit of a long one. So um, if someone wants to call, now's the time. I'll give you just a couple of minutes. Let's check in on the chat going. Um, yeah, Aaron Goldberg says he's going to have to write in your stories. Please, yeah, Cosmic Channels Podcast at gmail.com. Uh, definitely want to hear him. So uh, send it in. Um, I don't even know, to be to be brutally honest, I had such issues tonight that I don't even know if I'll be able to make a pod version out of this live one. We'll see if I can salvage but i had some serious uh issues that i did not run into uh when i was doing the test record last week uh when i thought i had everything figured out um i see someone saying uh zinger saying the the randomatron should be repurposed for cosmic channels um that's a good point i mean i could enter all these stories into the ra uh, randomatron uh, as with uh you know some stories from the ufo casebook um but you know I really want this show to be fan driven and grow it with uh, sharing with fans, sharing their stories. Uh, not so much me reading from a book. I don't mind reading the written in stories, but um, I want your guys' stories. That's uh, that's what interests me on the show. Uh, since we don't have a caller on the line right now, I am going to uh, read a story. And this is from, this is from, uh, let me see if I can. Yeah. Okay. This is from Joe. Um, this has actually been sitting in the Cosmic Channels podcast um, from the Gmail right from right, I think right when we canceled the show the last time. Um, so here we go. This is a story you can read for the Halloween special. A little late for that, but uh, feel free to use my name, Joe. Back a few years around 2007, 2008, when I was heavily involved in ghost hunting with a few friends, and eventually we added a couple of mediums to our group. We used to do a whole cemetery thing, but also went down the road of researching other historical places around the city and investigating those as well as getting into the lore of stories of the places. Uh, this story is about my dad's house. My dad's house was an old post-World War II Queenslander uh, photo attached, so all made of solid hardwood compared to modern construction houses where you have plaster sheets uh, nailed to a subframe. Once I started uh, to get tuned into the spiritual world, uh, yes, Dan, if you're involved in it enough and have the right coaches from experienced people, you can open up to being more sensitive to the ghostly presence. You've just got to be open and willing to believe, and eventually you can pick up subtle changes around you. Uh, though all my ghost hunting and my medium friends guiding what to look for how to tune into ghosts and spirits. It wasn't long until I started noticing things happen around the house. Eventually, I started to regularly notice shadow spirits around the house from the corner of my eye. Uh, they were there for a fleeting moment before disappearing again, and this happened mostly in the kitchen, but in other rooms as well on occasion. Uh, after a while, I started to notice that when I had a shower, the bathroom mirror would fog up, as they do when you have a hot shower. Uh, I start seeing a basic female face outline in the mirror fog. I would even occasionally wipe the mirror with my towel just in case it was the finger smudges or whatever was causing the face outline. And fair enough, a couple days later, the face would be back again. I can confirm for sure that there was there's been at least one death death in the house as my dad had his account accountant see office set up in the front of the house for a while and one of his clients said 
he was friends with the son of a guy who had hung himself under the house about 20 years prior. I spoke to my medium friends about these happenings, and they decided to visit the house to investigate it further. As soon as they walked through the front gate, they said that they were told by an angry spirit of an older man to get off my land. Uh, they believe this to be the spirit of the original owner of the home from back in the day, who must have died on the property many decades ago. My medium friends also mentioned the spirit of the suicide guy was still hanging around. I hadn't mentioned this to them before they visited, only told them that there was a high level of paranormal activity in the house. But this spirit just stayed quietly in the background, minding his business, if you will. They also mentioned two young children, a brother and sister spirits, who had previously lived in the house and were supposedly murdered. According to my friend, these two were always hiding in the ceiling space as they were scared of the old man spirit. They also mentioned the girl who I had been seeing in the mirror. Allegedly, it turns out she also committed suicide in the house by cutting her wrist in the bathtub, and she was only a late teenager. I started to go down the road of mediation or sorry, meditation to try and contact any of these spirits, and through this, I was able to find at least what I think the name of the girl was, which was Judy. Through further meditation and trying to contact the spirits of the boy and girl one night, I received a very vivid dream of a boy and a girl on a swing set in the park. I was just watching them on the swing, and then a dark shadow rose from behind the swings and grabbed one of the kids and swallowed it into the darkness. And then a minute later, the shadow grabbed the other kid and swallowed it into the darkness as well. And then it was just an empty swing set. One night, I was lying in bed and was just about to fall asleep when I felt something on top of the duna next to me, as if something had laid down on the bed next to me on the top of the duna. I don't know what a duna is, but I'm sure Australian listeners know what a duna is. They're going to make fun of me. I could feel the duna pressure down a little bit to me, maybe the mattress. I believe this to be the spirit of Judy. My medium friend said that this spirit took a liking to me and felt kind of safe when I was around or something, hence why she always appeared in the bathroom mirror trying to somewhat signal me that she was present. Going back to the point I said earlier about the solid wood walls, these walls are made of solid hardwood construction, approximately one inch thick. In my bedroom, I had double glass door pictured that went into the enclosed veranda. To the side of the... Uh, to the side was a wall about three feet wide. On this wall hung an oil painting that was just one of my dad used to have in his office. It was just a generic country scene, nothing special. But when I waved the EMF detector near the wall randomly, like Braden does, where the painting was, it always spiked high level EMF. I could test it any time during day or night, and this one wall would always spike. This was very strange because there were no wires off anything electrical on either side of that uh, warm and because it was solid there was no wires inside the wall and nothing electrical anywhere near the section of wall on the other side that could trigger the EMF meter so it's safe to say that the house is extremely haunted although none of the spirits ever seem to mean harm or move stuff from what I could tell after a couple years I moved out and got married and let's just say it wasn't the last haunted house I've lived in but I'll save those stories for another time keep up the awesome work with the shows and stay cool boys looking forward to more canadian mongoose stories and making many more memes in the future um that's from joe thank you for sending that in it's uh it, like interesting story to see someone who's like actively ghost hunting and actively uh practicing like meditation and stuff who's like seeing these things so really cool um Anyways, the Cosmic Lines are open. We got five more minutes. I want one more call. Come on, 1-833-703-0424. Let's get it. I want to hear one more call before the end, or we can just wrap it up a little early. Totally up to you. And just like that, you ask the universe, and the universe delivers. Cosmic Channels, you're on the line. What's your name? Where are you calling from? This is Agent Anderson from Santa Rosa, California. What's going on, Agent Anderson? Uh, the only agent who's ever failed to poison me in person. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good attempt, though, you got to admit. It, it was a good attempt. It was, a, <laughs> it was a phenomenal attempt. I don't even know what just happened there. I, I just I, I got a weird I got a weird alert of s singing Maester Daniel. I'm like, I, I don't even know why that how that happened. But anyways, 
Uh, huh. What do you got for me tonight? Well, I had a dream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I, dream I said, last I night. Said, I said I would take a dream. So you're the one dream. Let's hear the dream. <laughs> no, no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. Um, I do have a I do have a good dream story, but maybe for another time. Actually, okay. I wanted to talk about, because you had that recent episode where the guy said, basically, just stop paying your mortgage. <laughs> yeah. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the way banks work, because most people probably don't <laughs> think of it this way. But... It's absolutely insane if you think about it. So it I don't know how it is in Canada, but here the traditional mortgage when you buy your house is an 80-20 mortgage. So you put 20% down and the bank covers the other 80% for the cost of the house, right? Yeah. So if you're buying if you're buying a $100 house, so just keep the number simple, you put down $20 and the bank puts down $80. Yeah. Then if yeah, you I, default I don't, I don't, on the I don't loan, find this shit that complicated, bro. Yeah. So if you it, if you default on the loan, the bank takes your house, right? Yeah. But the crazy thing is the bank's not actually putting down $80 because of the fractional reserve system. They're only putting down $8. So in other words, you're putting down $20. They're putting down $8. And if you default, they keep everything. Yeah. But it's even worse than that because um, instead of $8, they're actually putting somebody else's money down, not even their own money. They're putting down deposits. So the whole thing is just like a really big scam. They're not even putting down their own money. They're putting somebody else's money. You're putting down more, and then you lose your house if you can't make your payments. Yeah, It's a crazy scheme. Well, unless you write without recourse on the bottom of your yeah. when you sign for your mortgage. Damn it, I forgot to do that. <laughs> well, you're stuck in the rat race now, my friend. <laughs> I know. What can you do? It's a, But it, I don't know. It's... What was your thoughts on that guy? What was your thoughts on that guy? practicing a year and a half ah uh, i mean i to be honest i couldn't even get through the whole episode it was just really hard to listen to <laughs> yeah no, I, <laughs> I, just, I i agree dude it was we had we had a we struggled we struggled with that one because we were like holy sh- god damn man that was that was painful what was this this is not what we were pitched <laughs> Yeah, I just skipped to the after hours because the after hours was actually really <laughs> funny. You guys are basically just talking shit the whole time. Yeah. So that well, was fun. <laughs> well, it's, you have to like, but, especially when you have someone that's that frustrating and sit, like saying absolute nonsense. Like literally, he the, the guy said, as someone joked about earlier, 20% of the time this works every time and the other 80% of the time it works too. And you're like, yeah. so it works 100% of the time. Like, like, what you, which, how's your math doing, bro? Like, it's uh, it's frustrating. Yeah, I think I think your guys' assessment that this guy's going to be in jail in a couple of years, I think that's probably accurate. <laughs> oh yeah, it was. Uh, it, it's very interesting. So, if you're listening to this through Cosmic Channels, head and you're interested in what we're talking about, we did an interview uh, with a guy. Uh, I think it's Case File three oh one um on alien theorists theorizing you can go check that out it's 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 a hard listen it's not our best work but the end i would say the last 20 minutes are kind of funny and if you're on our patreon the after hours are pretty funny but uh yeah 100 percent people in the chat 100 percent going to jail without a doubt hey everybody's got some duds once in a while it's not a big yeah. deal uh, well, well, <laughs> you know what though honestly that interview probably generated some of the most hilarity from people's comments and frustrations and sending us pictures and like uh, you know, we, we've get, gotten emails about it, about like people making jokes about now having free money. They're like, Hey, thanks. Thanks to you guys. I'm now uh, traveling the world. Um, I can't get another visa though. Can you send me money? I'm stuck in Thailand. <laughs> like stuff like that. We're like, yeah. we're like, that's, <laughs> that's pretty funny. So, uh, um, yeah. anyways, it, it is what it is. Why don't you put, pitch your show, Angie Anderson? Uh, you, I know you got a, you got a rival show. <laughs> <laughs> pitch it oh yeah well i wouldn't say i wouldn't say it's a rival show i mean you know we we kind of do we're, we're our friends. own thing friends but of, friends of friends yeah we're, it's all yeah friends of the community. show yeah hey i think the more of us there are the bigger the community gets so it's all better but yeah i got a podcast called all things strange and we do you know similar stuff we talk about whatever we feel like that week you know conspiracies ufos paranormal that kind of thing kind of similar but it's it's different too so so um while I'm on, what do you, do you think? Since we, you know, I'm gonna ask you real quick this little hot, 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 quick questions here. Uh, you, you, what UFOs? Like, are they are they here? Aliens? Are they here? Are they are they muddling around? What are your thoughts? What's your personal thought? At first, I, you know, years ago, I wasn't totally convinced, but the more I've looked into certain cases, I think there's a lot of evidence 
that we are being visited in some form. If you look at especially historical cases, you know, from the 40s, 50s, and 60s, where there's these crafts that we're seeing that were doing maneuvers that we couldn't do then and that we probably still can't do today. And there's just so many of these cases with fantastic evidence. My favorite is probably the 1966 Michigan swamp gas sightings, where you have hundreds of witnesses all over the place. And if you dig into the Blue Book files, you can see people reporting similar things all over the country. So that one was really good. And there's this craft that is able to, from a dead stop, to shoot across to wherever at a very high rate of speed so fast that you can't even really see it moving from a dead stop. We don't have that now, and we didn't have it then. Yeah. So what is it? I don't know. It's not It's not a mirage. It's not a ball lightning. It's what could it be? I don't know. It's a structured craft. As all the witnesses said, it was made out of metal. So who knows? But I think that there's enough evidence to say that probably we are being visited. And our own military came to that conclusion a long time ago with the estimate of the situation. Now, have you uh, have you ever heard of the Exeter incident? The Exeter incident. I don't think I'm familiar with that one. Okay, so you would you would like that one? We just did it's you know little plug for my own show there that uh, comes out Monday. Uh, it's in, like really interesting, and it not so it doesn't have as many witnesses as the the Swamp Gas one, but the witnesses are credible. What it does have is it has an unbelievable amount of temps from the military and the air force absolutely trying to disprove what happened and just falling flat on their face. Every time they try to like open their mouth to be like, this is what it was literally like at one point they're like, listen, everything you guys think you saw that night was just the air force base. Or the lights were turning on and to prove it, we invite every, everyone from the town who believes this nonsense into this field. And at, at sun sundown, we'll turn on the lights to show you that it's just the lights from the Air Force Base, the like training lights. So everyone comes to this field and they have like Air Force officials on radio. It's been like, okay, everyone, are you ready? Hit the lights. And the Air Force turns on the <laughs> yeah. nearby Air Force Base, turns on the lights. And they're like, turn on the lights. And they're like, the lights are on. And they're like, oh. everyone's standing in the field and like you can't see the lights. And they like Air Force like officials like just slunk slink away as like the townspeople are like jeering them, like making fun of them, like yeah, you losers. Uh it's it's absolutely fascinating of what happened. And like you had police officers see this thing and former like Air Force uh, veterans that were like, This was not a plane, this was silent. It it, it had a flashing light pattern we've never like like that nothing we have. It was making moves that we cannot make in our aircrafts. Uh in interesting. You'd love it. Check it out. Exeter incident. Yeah, I'll have to take a look at it. Sounds really interesting. And that's pretty common with a lot of these cases. They go out of their way to come up with explanations that don't make any sense to try to convince people that what they saw wasn't really, yeah, yeah. you know, a UFO. 100%. My favorite is the Illinois 2000 case where people saw a giant structured triangle shaped craft and the official explanation was Venus. Yeah, <laughs> Or at least at least that's what the skeptic said. And no one uh I like I love nothing more when they're like, listen, I don't know if you guys know this before. Like anyone who's seen UFO signs, they're like, listen, I don't know if you've looked at this guy, but there's these things up there called stars. And you probably just got yourself yeah. confused with your little pea brain. Yeah. <laughs> looking up, seeing the twinkly lights up there. They're, those are called stars. That's what you saw. You're like, no, I know what stars are. I've seen them. I've I've never once yeah. looked at Venus in the early morning. Been like, holy, oh my God. Oh, it's coming at me. <laughs> Oh, it makes the swamp yeah. gases causing atmospheric refraction. Oh, oh, no, there's a sun dog up there. Oh, my God. Like, no, it never happens. It's crazy. It always makes you laugh when those are the, you know, or any of experienced pilots. And they're like, yeah, they just, they must have got turned around up there. Jupiter was out there that night. <laughs> really freaked them out. <laughs> These guys are yeah, dive, well, actually, dive bombing <laughs> the UFOs. We just did the Gorman dog fight. Oh, and they said uh, the official... <laughs> The official explanation was a weather balloon in Jupiter. Yeah. They're like, wait a minute. <laughs> Come this, on. This, this guy's got combat experience and he's gonna get fooled by a weather balloon in Jupiter. Get out of here. He was in a he was in a legit dog fight with this thing. I listen, I I'm a layman. I don't know a lot about weather balloons, 
but I don't think they're what, what, what was he in a P? What was the plane he was in a P ninety or P ninety? I can't remember. P fifty one. P fifty one. I do not think, just in my layman monkey brain, I don't think that a weather balloon is going to be <laughs> outrunning that <laughs> like ever, where he's chasing it and then it's chasing him. Uh, it just seems ludicrous. Uh, well, and if if you look at uh, the official explanation says that, well, none of the ground witnesses actually saw the craft maneuvering. But if you look at the Blue Book files and the witness statements, the witnesses did see the craft maneuvering around. So they actually did witness part of the dogfight, but they were going so fast and they went far. So I'm guessing they didn't see the entire thing. Yeah. But the official explanation is automatically disproved if you bother to look at the original statements of the witnesses. They're lying. Yeah. It's Jupiter. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we told you it. Anyway, that's a wild one, Anderson. Uh, yeah. I'm gonna have to get you to call back in, and we should do. Uh, we should plan that. Like you know, you, you know, you don't have to call every week if you don't want to. But uh, you know, when you uh-huh. when you when you're thinking you want to call the Cosmic Challenge, you got a story or something. Maybe we'll do a quick little. If you if you have like whatever your case file was or whatever your your case was that you were recently talking about, we can do five minute UFO yeah. <laughs> little little nuggets for people. Yeah, that, well, we do a lot of weird stuff, too. Like, maybe next time I'll call in and talk about the uh, RFK assassination. That was a weird one. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a good uh, one. We'll save that for another time, though. I'm going to open the lines yeah. for one last call. Thank you so much for calling in to the Cosmic All Chance. right. Well, thanks for opening up the channels again. We all enjoy the show, and I'll catch you guys later. Take care, buddy. And just like that, the Cosmic Channels is open for the last time uh, tonight. Um, I did start a little late, so if anyone else was hoeing or humming about calling the Cosmic Channels line, um, call right now, one 703 I will take one last call um, before I shut it down for the night. Um, I'll, I'll set a timer here, and if we can get a call on before um, the timer runs out, I'll take one last call. If not, we'll just get out of here. Um, but we're trying to grow the sh- Oh, I love it. Thank you so much. Uh, let's bring this person on. Uh, what's it's Cosmic Channels? What's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm my name's Clayton. What's going on, I'm Clayton? From Iowa. Iowa. What's going on, buddy? What do you call on? What's your story tonight? So I used to work at a elementary school that was built on a Indian burial ground. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent haunted. I like it. Yeah, it it is. One night, I was working, minding my business. I was actually listening to one of your podcasts, and all of a sudden, these board games start playing all around, like musical ones for preschoolers. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like Jumanji, uh, Jumanji style, you're hearing the drums? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, a lot of creepy shit went on there. Like, you could hear... People walking down the hallways on linoleum, whatever yeah. the hell you say. No, l- linoleum. On the floor. Yeah. Linoleum? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's one. Yeah. You could hear people walking down it, and you turn around, no one would be there. Lights would start flickering. And what, what was this, what was the name of the school again? South Hama. And where where is it located? I just want to know because if anyone ever listens that went there, they can call in and share their account too. That's when I I was a janitor there. Oh, you I were the, there. So if anyone else has worked there or gone there, I, like that's what I want. So is, is most of the stuff happened at night then? Oh yeah. So what's a what's the creepiest thing that happened then to you? I was yeah I was cleaning a uh, preschoolers, one of their classrooms and. Some board games started going off randomly, lights flickering. What do you think? What do you think it was? Probably uh, people pit the Indians pissed that they rebuilt on them. Built over top of the like burial site. The, the burial grounds, yeah. And just like, is this a? Do you still work there? I do not. Did anyone else that you worked with like hear or see anything? Yeah, I talked to some of my coworkers that worked there, and they said, yeah, I'm, I don't work there. And they also told me to stay away from working at our middle school. That was the most haunted place. 
They're just like creepy places to work, like at at night, especially. Yeah. Interesting. And our middle school actually was a bomb shelter back in the 1900s. That was refurbished to a middle school. Oh, that's a interesting, uh, interesting change of venues. So was that was that one just as haunted? They say that was more haunted. And what did any did you hear any stories that what what happened there? Just the same thing, lights flickering, stuff turned on and off, projectors going off, stuff like that. Like would you like instances like when you're saying like stuff going on like you leave a room, the lights are off, you come back around the corner, lights are on kind of thing? Yeah. Any like any chance like are you working alone or is there any chance that there's someone in there like oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm, fuck with them? I'd always be working alone. Okay, so there's like sm- little to no chance that there's someone fucking with you then, it's not like a coworker or something. Yeah. Okay, creepy. So if if you think it's ghosts, like, why do you like? Do you think they're trapped here? Do you like what do you, what do you why do you think they don't go somewhere else? What do you, what's your thoughts on that? Um, from I have some friends that live on the settlement still and they they say it's from their ancestors that they want to be with their family still oh that's a that, that's a good point so it's like they're just they're just it's you know their land and they want to be where their, their family were makes sense it adds up yeah all right well hey thanks for calling in calls your channels you're going to be the last caller of the night really appreciate the calling well thank you for having me on no problem, man. Hey, take care of yourself. You as well. All right, bye. And uh, with that, the Cosmic Lines are now closed. Um, just before I head out, there's uh, ways to support the show. You want to see this show continue. Uh, please spread the word. Tell your friends. Um, Thursday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, let's grow the show. I, I, I'll, I'll do kind of a Friday, uh, shareholder meeting on Instagram. I'll post, uh, how all our followers looking, what the, sh- how the last night stream did, uh, how many callers we had, um, and that kind of stuff. So we can all kind of help the show grow together. Um, I'm going to put every dollar that we, we raise, um, on PayPal or the super chat, uh, back into the show. So, you know, the things that I would like to, uh, get going right away. First off is um, I'd like to apply uh, or upgrade the lines again so we can have, uh, you know, a nice voicemail, uh, uh, the call waiting, maybe five people in the queue um, rather than um, just the one. I mean, it's it's ideal for now. It's, it works fine, but that's the first thing I'd like to upgrade. And then, uh, you know, we'll go from there. But that's the first thing that I'm using the money for and um, some hosting fees and stuff like that that – it would be nice to cover. Um, it's all fan driven. It's your show. I just host it. Um, the cosmic lines are now closed and we will see you next week.